Time. Let's join in game two and whoa, we okay, got a Okay, we have here. some <laughs> permanents, folks. That is four copies of Supreme Phantom on Jakob's side of the battlefield. We did talk about how important that creature was in this mirror. However, interestingly enough, three of the creatures in Jakob's side of the battlefield, not spirits, right? But some large ledger shredders. Another really important card in the matchup here is Shacklegeist, which Jim Davis has on his side of the battlefield, which he's using to kind of lock down some of these bigger threats on Jakob's side. Boy, he really needs to. Look at all that power over there for Jakob. Yeah, I mean, Jim Davis, at least from what I see here, no Supreme Phantoms and no great way to attack here. So likely just on the defensive right now. Boy, this is a very well-developed board. Some interesting stuff going on with the huge ledger shredders. And also, you notice the Ascendant Spirit there for Jim Davis. That could become an issue in a little bit as well. Uh, oh, but I mean, if you look, Jakob, five life, right? Yes. Five life. Now, he might look like he has the better board with the Supreme, uh, with the Supreme Phantoms and the large ledger shredders. But if you can find a way... He needs to still find a way to survive here. That's so right. So Jim Davis can't just go for an attack with everything and just squeeze in the last few points of damage. You see that rattle chain sitting in hand Think here for Yaku. Think you're going to see a cast here just to perhaps save an activation? No, still waiting. All right, let, let me try to figure this out just a little bit more. <laughs> I know we're just hopping straight into this, but here Jim Davis has the ability to tap down another one of the Supreme Phantoms, right? Mm -hmm. And that leaves Jakob with four flying blockers on the battlefield. If Jim Davis gets... The problem is on Jim Davis's side, just a bunch of one ones, right? So even if all the large flyers gets blocked, likely only taking three damage here and Jakob has the rattle chains in hand. Now, if Jim Davis can find a Supreme Phantom of his own, boom, all of a sudden you get that much closer to getting in for a lethal attack because Jakob only down to five life. You see a Faceless Haven on the battlefield, but everything flies. Not that big of a concern. Jakob would probably love to start firing up that Faceless Haven. It's absolutely massive, but he wants to keep Rattle Chains available. Jakob just looking to see if that is a lethal attack. Doesn't look like it is. Okay, there's a Spectral Sailor off the top. That would break the parity as far as creature count goes. Both players have seven of them, but it's just another 1-1. One -one. Right. So if... Hypothetically, if Jim Davis attacks with everything, four creatures get blocked. Let's just say that it's the big, the four biggest. Then you have two Spectral Sailors and a Mausoleum Wanderer that get in. If you cast the Spectral Sailor, that's four damage, right? So he's one damage short. But of course, we also know that Jakob has a Rattle Chains in hand mm -hmm. that he can't cast. Jakob perhaps trying to bait Jim Davis into making what he thinks would be a lethal attack oh. only to have it foiled. The main phase Spectral Sailor. Does make the Mausoleum Wanderer bigger. Jim Davis has the ability to tap down three creatures a turn. Has a total of, it looks like what, seven spirits in play. You can see Jim's playing around Rattle Chains, at least to an extent, by doing this on upkeep. Yaka being extremely patient here with that Rattle Chains, too. He is holding on to it. It could represent a very big tempo swing. Okay, there's that land. I do wonder if the, uh, if the land wants to start getting in there. Faceless Haven is huge here, right? Right, and it's not really going to be blocking anything. Right, that, I'm looking at, you know, Jim's side, it's just all flyers, so literally. What is it, an 8-7? 4-3 plus 4? Yeah. <laughs> Technically, that's a two-turn clock. <laughs> he would still have mana for rattle chains. Would leave, would leave Jakob a little more vulnerable to the various mana leak type effects, the other <laughs> counter spells. True. That may be too risky. Yeah. 
Again, Jim, I mean, card that I imagine that he's looking for here is Supreme Phantom. That would be and an absolute tacky. fortune. Wow, look at this. Getting in with a ledger wow. shredder. Davis says, sure. Okay. I'll go to 12. And Jim can now tap another creature. Is this the turn where Jakob cast Rattle Chains? I, I think feel he like has he may, to. may be locked in now. No? Okay. So wait, so now there's Wait, but there's no more spirits, yeah. There's four blockers. Hmm. Jakob, Faceless Haven's interesting. That is interesting. Could he proactively tap down some things and still have enough damage to get through? Well, not with the not, not because he has the rattle chains. Because Jakob has the rattle chains, I don't think so. Right, because he can stop one of the activations. Right. Although, wait, does Jakob need to? Jakob needs to cast rattle chains before blocks, right? Because if you just attack with everything, that's just a lethal attack in the air, right? If if Jim Davis attacks with everything, three the three biggest creatures get blocked. Oh, he could right? force him to cast so it. So then you you're you're going to take six damage. So could he leave so back you could a 1-1 one 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 and activate exactly. the Faceless Haven? He could leave back one Spectral Sailor, huh. attack with everything else. That still represents a lethal attack. Jakob plays Rattle Chains. In response, Jim Davis can then activate Faceless Haven, use the Shackle Guy's ability to tap down one of the remaining Flyers, and I think that's exactly enough. This is extremely complicated, also very risky. If it goes wrong for Jim, he just dies. Okay, he's, okay. he's going to say, I'm going to pass the turn again. Let's also not forget that Spectral Sailors can start drawing him cards here. And if this does look like a stalemate, Jim could draw himself out of it. Yeah, and, and Jim, again, because he drew the Faceless Haven, that's an extra tap, I believe, right? <laughs> Last time we checked, there were seven spirits on the battlefield, mm -hmm. and we found the Faceless Haven. Right. But remember, Jakob also attacked on that previous turn. He did. He sent in that ledger shredder. So now Jakob might just keep a creature back. So now we see Faithless Haven get activated. Geistlight Snare. You can tap down two more creatures here. Jakob has four blockers. Jim has got to be feeling some pressure here, too. Take a quick look at their clocks. He's at about seven and a half minutes, and Jakob's just under nine. <laughs> There's the 8 7 faceless Haven. Yeah. Time to get in. Jim has a decision to make here. He's, he's deciding on if he's going to allow Jakob to go to attackers or if he needs to tap something down. It's like, am I, do, am I really going to have to tap down this faceless Haven? I mean, remember, I mean, Jim is at 12. I suppose Jim, if Jakob gets a little too aggressive, Jim can put some blocks in to not die and then tap down the remaining creatures if Jakob doesn't attack with everything. And then just crack in. Right. I mean, that's what it feels like from both sides, right? <laughs> if you make any slip up whatsoever, you're dead. Yeah. If something goes wrong, you're dead. Oh, that's a lethal attack. Now, remember, Jim can just perhaps chump block with Faceless Haven, mm -hmm. right? And then tap down a remaining flyer. Yes. Okay, that's what he's lining up here. You get to tap two of the flyers that are, that's in play. So now, now Jakob just has a Brazen Bower, a Ledger Shredder, and a Rattle Chains, right? Does he need a Rattle Chains now? He needs to Rattle Chains, I believe he does. To, to burn a tap. Right, exactly. And then the question is, does Jim still have enough here? Right. Jim just not, all the Supreme Phantoms over on Jakub's side of the board, literally all in his deck, zero for Jim. So we're looking at what, three blockers here? Is that correct? No, 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 four blockers. There's a Ledger Shredder. Ledger Shredder. Not a spirit. Not a spirit, will not pump the Mausoleum Wanderer. One, two, three, four. 
one day. Are we are, are we really one damage short? Yes, you, he can right? get in for four if he attacks with everything. All the creatures with two or more power get blocked, and wow. then you have. So if that was a spirit, it would have been it. If that was a spirit, that would have been it. It would have pumped the wanderer, and he could have just shipped. Jeez, wow. that's another blocker, and now a shackle geist of on Jakob's side. Oh boy. Oh my brain. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now Jim. Hold on. Jim's clock is getting low, but he's down a game, so he just has to keep playing and try to figure out a way to get out of this. This board from Jakob Toth is massive, though. Now, Jim does get the first wave of these tap effects. Yes. Right? And he can kind of force Jakob, if he wants to play that game, he can tap one plus his other. Right. But then he's kind of doing the work that Jim wants to do for him. But is Jakob going to utilize the Shackle Guy's ability to tap something else down to potentially threaten a lethal attack here? Because he's tapping down one of its spirits here. And tapping down a Ledger Shredder. Does Jakob have a lethal attack? He just fired up the Faceless Haven, hit his an 8-7. The nice Six thing- Six blockers for Jim? The nice thing about the, the Faceless Haven is no matter what, it's still going to eat something here, right? Yes. So you attack and that just allows you to kill something. Can he just kill Jim? Jim has six blockers. No, he would go down to he would not die if he blocked everything. Okay. And then he would tap down the, the rest of the creatures in play. So and then lose. And then possibly lose. What a complicated Boy. board. I'll tell you, th this deck has been well positioned and served them very well, so I'm sure they'll be happy that they picked it, but this is a nightmare. Like, this is just an absolute stress factory right here. You have no wiggle room. None at all. It's all on board. There's no removal. All right, so what are we looking at here? We have the ability to tap two creatures, and Jim Davis is really interested in tapping down the spirits, as Jakob does have Shacklegeist in play. Right. Okay. Now, a lot of different options here. The question is, does a card like a Supreme Phantom well, would that be enough for Jim Davis to attack back for a lethal? It depends on how much he's losing on his board here. So he's losing a borrower and a wanderer. But he survived. But he survives. There are three blockers. And Jim can attack for four if everything else gets blocked. There's another ledger Jeez, shredder. Jeez, these ledger shredders. <laughs> oh. Last turn it was a Ledger Shredder, really needed it to be a Spirit. Oh my goodness, so... Yeah, and you can, if Jim did something like Ledger Shredder, he can't even spell Pierce it to put a counter potentially on the, on the, <laughs> right, the Ledger Shredder that right. he has. You can't draw a card with the Spectral Sailor, that's not gonna do it. No, everything's face up from Jakub's side too, he only has a colorless mana available, so nothing. It's felt like this is how it's been since we joined this game, right? Where it's kind of like, this is what I have. Each player's had, like, at most one or two cards in hand. <laughs> God. And now, does Jakob have enough to attack for le lethal? It feels like he does. He can't tap anything down here, right? He only has one spirit. He does have seven lethal attackers just individually. And he has a 3-5 and a 3-1 to spare. Correct. With, with the Faceless Haven, too. And a Faceless right? Haven that's an 8-7. <laughs> so eight lethal attackers. And this feels Jim like Davis it's has overwhelmed. eight blockers. But yeah. he loses all of his creatures. He, he would lose effectively his whole entire board. I don't, I don't even think Jim can utilize his Shackle Geist, right? No, because it's two blockers disappearing to take out one attacker, and he can't afford that. Oh, he's going for some. Did, did I? Maybe I, he has a win that we didn't see did here. Did I miss something here? 
This is a non-lethal attack. So he can just block. That's three damage coming in. Jakob falls to okay. two, but and, and there's I nothing mean, left. Yeah, there's nothing left. So no. I guess that was him just giving yeah. up. And that's Jakub Toth picking up the second game and the match and securing his seat in the top 